picking up where we left off, um, talking about acute radiation syndrome. So now we're going to talk about Chernobyl uh, nuclear power plant accident. So the location of the nuclear power plant was in the Soviet Union, and it happened on April 26th of 1986. Uh, several tons of burning graphite, uranium, uh, dioxide fuel, and other contaminants such as cesium-137 and iodine-131, along with plutonium-239, were ejected into the atmosphere and affected a three-mile uh, high radioactive plume which, uh, with intense heat, which affected a huge area. So two people in um, the power plant died instantly. 29 um, died within three months as the consequences of ther uh, thermal trauma, so burns, and severe injuries from doses of whole body radiation of approximately six grays um, or more. So use of biological criteria in the identification of radiation uh, casualties during the first two days of the incident. So what they did, they took the dose assessment and determined it from the biological dosimetry based on how the effects were on the body. So they did um, levels of lymphocytes and granulocytes in the blood and quantitative analysis of uh, dissectric chromosomes in the blood along with uh, hematopoietic cells uh, coming from the bone marrow. So that's how they're able to gauge how much radiation each person was exposed to. So um, this is a picture of the power plant and the nuclear four, unit four reactor that blew up and this is the after picture. I know it's not a great picture but it's the one that we have. So um, ARS and the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and uh, Nagasaki. So human uh, population affected by ARS as a consequence of war. So that's pretty sad. So follow-up studies of survivors who did not die of ARS demonstrated late deterministic and stochastic uh, effects of ionizing radiation such as cataracts and um, they had lymphoma, leukemia, different things that um, came up. Um, it created awareness of the need for a thorough understanding of ARS and appropriate medical support of people affected based on the dose that they've received um, and what medical support we can do. So let's talk about what LD lethal dose is. So when we talk about LD5030, what that is is signifies the whole body dose of radiation that can be lethal to 50% of the exposed population um, within 30 days. So the, the people that are going to die within 30 days. So the quantitative measurement that is fairly precise um, when applied to animals. The problem is with humans it's a little bit different. So the LD for humans may require more than 30 days for its full expression. So we're going to change that to a 60 day. Um, for adult humans, it is estimated uh, dose is three to four grays without any medical support that you would die. 50% of the population would die within 30 days. Uh, the whole body, body dose of six grays may cause the death of the entire population in 30 days without medical support. So three to four grays. Uh, grays we're at an LD5030 and if uh, we have a six um, gray it's um, 130 <laughs> so 100 percent of the population will die within 30 days um, with medical support uh, humans have been known to tolerate doses up to 8.5 grays so that's kind of important so 8.5 with medical support you can see here, so you can see there's the threshold dose that we talked about. So one gray is typically when we start to see any kind of um, effect of radiation. So coming up, um, here's your 50-30. If you look, um, this is percentage of lethality, and this is your radiation dose. So if you go to 50 right here, 50% 50 of the population, we're right in between the 3 to 4. So 3 to four grays, so three and a half grays if you want to look at that, three and a half grays um, for 50% of the population to die within 30 days. All right, so um, since the um, LD5030 doesn't work well for us uh, human beings compared to animals, the LD1030, LD5060, and the LD160, so there's other measures of lethality. All of these measures refer to a percentage of subjects who die after a certain number of days. So LD5060 may be more accurate for humans. That's 50% of the population will perish within 60 days. Um, uh, 
the value of medical support for exposed people here on this graph. So this is lethal dose values for healthy adults who receive a specific medical treatment after exposure to low linear energy transfer radiation at dose rates of more than 100 milligray per minute. So you can see here minimal um, on a 50-60 if you're at a 3.2 to 4.5 and then we go to optimal supportive and then you have your bone marrow transplant there at 11. So repair and recovery. So cells contain enzymes in their biochemistry enabling them to possibly repair or recover when they are exposed to sublethal doses of ionizing radiation. After irradiation, um, survival cells begin to repopulate. This permits an organ that has sustained functional damage as a result of radiation exposure to regain some or most of its functional ability. The amount of functional damage sustained determines the organ's potential recovery. So the higher the dose of radiation, um, the less likely that the cells are going to be able to recover. So, in the repair of sublethal damage, oxygenated cells, which receive more nutrients, have a better um, prospect for recovering than um, hypo, uh, hypoxic cells that consequently receive fewer nutrients. So, oxygenated cells are more sensitive to radiation but are able to recover, where hypoxic cells are not able to recover from injury. So, that's like your nerve cells. Um, Repeated radiation injuries have cumulative effects, so approximately 10% of radiation damage is ir, um, irreparable, whereas the remaining 90% may be repaired over time. So you're looking at about a 10% damage to your organ systems if you receive a substantial dose. Local tissue damage, so a destructive uh, response in biological tissue can occur when any part of the human body receives high radiation doses. So significant cell death usually results after such a, a substantial partial body exposure. This leads to atrophy of the organs and the tissues. So the consequence is the organs and the tissues sustain such damage, they may lose their ability to function or they may recover. It could go either way. But as we talked about that 10%, you probably can lose 10% function. If recovery occurs, it may be partial or complete depending on the type of cells involved and the dose of radiation received. If an organ and tissue recovery fails to occur, necrosis or death of the um, irradiated biological structure results. Organ and tissue response to radiation exposure depends on the radiosensitivity, the reproductive characteristics, and the growth rate. So when we talk about the skin, there are three layers to the skin. Um, there's the epidermis, which is the outer layer, the dermis, the middle layer, and the hypodermis, which is the subcutaneous layer. Oops, that's funny how I put that. Sorry about that, I'll fix it on your PowerPoint. The accessory structures include hair follicles, sensory uh, receptors, subcutaneous glands, and sweat glands. So here's a picture of the skin in case you all forgot what it looks like. So here's your multiple layers. So go ahead and refresh your, your memory on that. So effects of ionizing radiation on the skin. So there's the radiodermatitis. It's um, significant redding, reddening of the skin caused by excessive exposures to ionizing radiation. They can lead to cancerous lesions of the hands and the fingers um, where a lot of radiologists in the old days used to have, to have their fingers amputated. So it led to three important safety practices. One is to wear radiopaque glasses. Two, enclose the x-ray tube in a protective housing. Hmm, interesting. And three, irradiate only the area of interest on the patient. So this is a patient here, um, disquamination we talked about, and this is the burns that the patient had um, from, uh, she's an atomic bomb survivor. So the effects of radiation on the skin also, so there's the epilation or hair loss, alopecia. Um, moderate doses of radiation may result in temporary hair loss. Large doses of radiation may result in permanent hair loss. So you, um, you'll see those patients in radiation therapy with um, bald spots on their head if they're receiving um, radiation to the face or head. Historical evidence of treating skin disease such as ringworm. Um, they use what's called uh, Grin's rays. Um, they're x-rays in the low range of 10 to 20 kbp. So oncology patients receiving ortho-voltage radiation therapy, 
treatments have demonstrated significant evidence of skin damage, so x-ray range between 200 and 300 kbp. And then cardiovascular and therapeutic interventional procedures that use high-level fluoroscopy for extended periods of time can cause significant effects on the skin. So um, a study can range between 100 to 200 milligrays per minute and up. So you can see how that add up really quick. And here is, um, I wanted to put the slide in. I wanted to show you on the male when we're talking about the uh, development of sperm. We have the spermatogonia, spermatocyte, spermatid, and then it goes to sperm. So this is your most sensitive uh, right here, whereas this, the spermatid, is the least sensitive. And when we're looking at the female, um, any damage within the process um, is bad. So uh, your syllabus covers that pretty well, so make sure you read your syllabus on that. So the effects of ionizing radiation on the reproductive system. So the ratio sensitivity of human germ cells, so the gonadic dose um, as low as 0.1 gray can depress the male sperm. So sperm population are caused genetic mutations in future generations. So the spermatogonia are drastically depleted by small amounts of radiation. So your syllabus said 50 rads, um, and they are the most sensitive where the uh, sperm spermatozoas are radio resistant comparison. Um, they're not radio resistant, they're just radio resistance in comparison to the spermatogonia. The gonadic dose that may delay or suppress menstruation in the females, so um, we're going to talk about that here. So girls and women, a gonadal dose of 0.1 gray may delay or suppress the menstruation. And gonadal dose of ionizing radiation that will cause temporary sterility in a male and female is 2 gray. And whereas the gonadal dose of ionizing radiation that will cause permanent sterility in a male and a female is five to six grays. Um, uh, hematologic effects, so radiation protection programs have long since abandoned relying on uh, hematologic depression as means of monitoring imaging personnel to assess whether they have sustained any degree of radiation damage from occupational exposure. So during the 1920s and 30s, periodic blood counts were the only means of monitoring workers engaged in radiologic practices. So they'd actually have to go get their blood drawn in order to see how much dose they were receiving. So um, whole body doses from ionizing radiation as low as, excuse me, 0.25 gray would produce a measurable uh, hematologic depression. So 0.25 gray. Consequences of hematologic depression for the human body is depression in the lymphocytes in the blood that leaves the body uh, vulnerable to foreign invaders such as infections and different things. So um, use of personal dosimeters for monitoring of occupational exposure made the practice of requiring periodic blood counts for monitoring radiation damage obsolete. Thank goodness. Okay, so the hemopoietic system consists of bone marrow, circulating blood, the lympho uh, lymphoid organs such as the lymph nodes, spleen, and thymus gland. Um, cells of the system all develop from a single precursor cell, um, the pluripotential stem cell. So radio sensitivity in order from least to most. So we have the lymphocytes are the most sensitive. We have neutrophils and then thrombocytes, so platelets and erythrocytes. So here is a diagram to show you. So uh, cytogenic effects. So cytogenics is the study of, um, of cells genetics with emphasis on cells chromosomes. The cytogenic analysis of the chromosomes may be accomplished through the use of chromosome map called karyotype. This map consists of photographic or photomicrographic. So we're going to look at the metaphase here. It is the phase of cell division in which the chromosome damage caused by radiation exposure can be evaluated. Chromosome abbreviations and chromatid abbreviations have been observed in the metaphase. So both low and high radiation dose can cause chromosomal damage that cannot be apparent immediately. Chromosomal breakage occurs as a consequence of this. So here is the map. I'm going to do one more um, lecture for you, and it's going to go over the summary of the chapter so that you have that. And yes, that is my dog whining and crying. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now she's playing with her squeaky toy too. <laughs>